Okay, teardown time of a LED light bulb. Uh, this is a remote controlled color LED light bulb. Um, this uh, infrared remote control can be used to set the color or set a pattern on this bulb. Uh, interesting kind of product because it was uh, quite inexpensive, like a $5 purchase, and uh, obviously a lot of sophistication in the sense you got at least a couple microprocessors probably in both the remote and the uh, bulb here. So, as always, uh, we'll take a look at how it performs and we'll tear it apart and look at the uh, design inside. Okay, uh, remote control is kind of cool. Uh, you can turn the bulb on, of course, uh, through infrared. Uh, there's three LEDs in it, a red LED, a green LED, and a blue LED, no surprise. And uh, there's a mode called white, which turns them all on. 16 preset colors. Uh, and then some patterns, a flashing pattern, then a slightly more appealing, uh, a fading pattern. And uh, I must say, whoever designs these remote controls, uh, it's black text on a gray background. There should be a law against that. So I just have it on what's normally known as white. Uh, if you point it down onto a piece of paper, you can you can see actually um, optically they haven't done a wonderful job of combining the three LED colors. It's kind of a blotchy pattern. So um, yeah, it's not really white, uh, but uh, kind of a neat color if you're looking for sort of a unique architectural washing of uh, a surface. Um, it's uh, quite quite curious looking. Oh well. So one other item of note is just simply the body temperature, um, obviously a uh, thermometer with a K-type thermocouple and just resting it uh, gently on top of the surface of the bulb. It gets reasonably hot, uh, 40 degrees centigrade. Okay, this is an enclosed light fixture, sort of you'd find in a house or something. The bulb obviously doesn't draw a lot of power, it's uh, a very small bulb, but even a bulb like this actually will start to see fairly significant uh, temperature rises. It's now about... 60 degrees centigrade, and uh, that's of course the biggest problem with these enclosed fixtures, so um, that surprised me actually, I didn't think a bulb of such modest wattage would see such a significant increase, but uh, even they uh, certainly have to pay attention on the enclosed fixture. Okay, so the bulb has uh, intensity control, it's pulse width modulated, you can see actually some banding on the camera, uh, it's picking up the pulse width modulation as well, as I adjust the intensity uh, the percentage of time the bulb is turned on uh, varies, of course, so uh, it's a very classic way of uh, achieving that. You can see that, like, for cinematography or photography, you can't actually use these kind of bulbs because you end up with these uh, uh, funny banding going on. So a pretty uh, straightforward assembly of uh, the little metal cap here and screws, and there's a lens bulb that, of course. Uh, there's two circuit boards. There's the circuit board which contains an LED and then a uh, bunch of control circuitry. We'll zoom into that in a second. Yeah, an AC to 5 volt uh, DC converter uh, on the bottom. So let's take a look at each board. So it's uh, what you'd expect. This is a 4 megahertz crystal here. Small 8 pin SOIC. All the markings removed, uh, which is a real traditional sign that the manufacturer is trying to uh, keep competitive details away from their competitors. I would presume it's a microprocessor of some sort. This is an infrared receiver that's used to control the uh, LED's uh, behavior. A single LED, actually, uh, in a single package with uh, a lens on top of it. Uh, I guess they ended the optics very well, however, because uh, when you put it like white, we'd seen uh, the colors kind of dispersing a little bit too much. Uh, otherwise, just some electrolytic capacitors and some transistors, it looks like, to uh, probably drive the uh, LED. Uh, a real straightforward assembly. Uh, looks though quite, uh, quite competent. So just a closer look at the uh, AC to DC converter, 120 volts DC on one side, 5 volts DC on the other. Yellow item, of course, is the transformer. It uh, looks like a fully isolated design. Uh, a couple of electrolytic smoothing capacitors, one on the AC side, one on the DC. Uh, flip it over and I'm sure we'll see the standard uh, components in an IE switching regulator. And indeed, uh, this is a bridge rectifier, which is the AC into high voltage DC. A buck regulator here. I don't recognize the brand name. Um, no surprise, it's probably an off-brand uh, from the Chinese uh, market. A uh, diode here, of course, uh, which uh, creates the uh, rectification on the other side of the transformer, and uh, just a few discrete. So, uh, very much uh, what you'd expect. So, uh, a real straightforward design. What's really kind of remarkable about this, uh, not so much as the topology, it's certainly a straightforward bit of electrical engineering, uh, it's just how common and how uh, inexpensive this kind of uh, LED controllable, remote controllable bulb has become. Um, in fact, in, in a future teardown here, uh, I have a fairly interesting bulb coming, uh, which also takes advantage of the 
relatively long-lived life of LEDs to then embrace some more control circuitry inside the bulb. So uh, there you go, uh, another interesting data point in LED light bulbs.